And so next, let's write the momentum for the fluid. And this is sort of where that homework problem two or three or whatever, and those of you that came in late, I, I made an announcement that there was actually a sign error in that equation. So if you, I'm not going to count off for that on your homework, uh, that, that sign error discrepancy. But if you recall, if you recall from that question, basically for a non-viscous non -viscous fluid, you were asked to show that the momentum balance looks like this, right? So this is for non-viscous fluid. So no shear stress. This is for a non-viscous fluid. OK. But this is written in terms of where V would be the, the total fluid velocity. And we want to write it basically in terms of the way we wrote the momentum balance for the solid fluid mixture in that we want to write it in, with a velocity that's relative to the velocity of the solid, OK? So um, basically, I'm going to multiply through by rho. And you'll, I'm going to leave the, the uh, grad p term here. And I'll multiply through by rho, and just to be precise, that's the density of the fluid times the body force, which I'm going to write this in component form, so I'll just say Vi. All right. And then we'll have our uh, convective term. I'm going to move it over to the other side of the equation, so um, minus w now. Time. The whole thing's times the fluid density. All right, so. So far, I, d I didn't do anything but rewrite the equation above and just replace V with W, OK? But because we did that, now you remember W is, is with respect to the velocity of the solid. And the fluid's moving with the solid. So we need to include the velocity of the solid, or the inertia of the solid, rather. OK, so now we have the inertia of the, s the fluid moving with the solid. And we're going to add in a viscous drag term. And so right now, I'm just going to call it R. right? And so this is basically the resistance or the inertia, the, the viscous resistance of the fluid W, the fluid velocity W with respect to the solid, V. And if we use uh, a Darcy-type law, we're going to say that Kij Rj is equal to Wi, right? So where K is, you know, we'll call it a permeability tensor. So, but the way it's written, it has a little bit different units than what you're probably used to. The units of this guy are length cubed time over mass. And it's related to the typical Darcy permeability, which I'll call K prime. Uh, it's, it's related to it by dividing by the density 
times gravity. Uh, so this this k prime has the units you're used to in units of velocity, so like length per time. Right. And you can see that that works out if you um, you know r should have units of momentum. So if you take the inverse of k and multiply by w, w has units of velocity, right? So then you have the, inver the inverse of K would be have units of mass, length cubed time, uh, and then you have uh, units of distance divided by time, and then you have units of mass, length squared, time squared, which is momentum. That, yes, 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 yeah, meter squared per time, yeah. But this, this relation is still right. I didn't make a mistake there. So th this K that we're using here, I mean, it's, it's still the permeability. We just want we want this equation needs to be unit consistent, so it needs to have units of momentum. So with that, this is a, this is the second equation, right? But we've basically introduced. In the first equation, we had two unknowns, V and W, right? Now I've added another equation, but I've added another unknown that is the pressure, right? So now we have three unknowns and two equations, V, W, and pressure. And so we need a third equation. 